Alright, so uh, today we're going to talk about Spring, Spring Framework, okay, for web application with Java, okay. So let's understand just the benefit of using Spring, right? So it's just using the Pojo plain old Java objects, right? So it's in modular fashion, right? Um, there are many packages and classes, just like other libraries, right? And now it says it doesn't reinvent the wheel, just like the way that you learned so far. You want to use math class, you just call math, right? You don't have to implement that method, right? Like this one's pretty much the same thing. Now, let's think about when you, when you write a big application. A big application. You probably don't want to write everything from scratch, right? Like math, right? You don't want to write all the method of math, right? So, Spring pretty much just a bigger picture a little bit. It's talk, just not talk about math. It's just talk about, hey, if I want to use a calculator, I can just go and get a calculator, right? But this is a user site, correct? Like calculator could be a framework, right? So, meaning for the developer, like we write a program, we want to use something to map to the database. They call ORM frameworks, object, relational mappings, something like that. Okay. If I want to have to do system dot out, you normally do print out something, right? To the console, right? You can actually print to the file. You see, output we call locking frameworks. You can do Java Enterprise, Quartz, and JDK timers, and other technologies. Okay. Now, testing an application written it with Spring is simple because environment dependent code is moved into this framework. Like, if I want to test my code, like now, how do you test your code? You write a class like person, you create a person driver, right? And you instantiate that the code that you write, right? In your right, main. So, they're going to have environment for you to test. Because think about if you have several classes, you could when you develop application, you can have more than one class, right? You can see, right? So they're gonna have a framework to help you. And they were talking about web framework is a well decided. We can use MVC framework. So, what's MVC? MVC, M stands for model, V stands for view, and C stands for controller. Okay, this is some concept that you should know. And it's going to talk in details here, right? So, pretty much as now when you write a code, you only worry about logic, right? The logic logic hey how do i how do i make a turns these are all logics right correct so this is pretty much a controller part they say hey logic stay in controller just like in android and introduced to you this separate right do you, you have the xml the res right that you go and look at xml right for the view see that so that's the view Logic separate in one section, view separate in another section. You see that? Logic we call controller. Why controller? Because you control everything inside. You are the control. You control. What do you control? You control the data movement. Right? So M pretty much is the, the model that represents the data. Like the data that you say input in. Right? You input something. 
so you put into logic I put like 5 comma 5 my logic is sum in the controller right so I do add the sum and update the view update the view to respond 10 to the user something like that make sense so it's just separate okay okay It's also have more API like JDBC. JDBC stands for Java Database Connection. Like now, you never talk to the database, right? You only talk to the user input, right? Now you could read the information from the file from the database too, right? To process there, like for example, when you when you log in. This is pretty much the web application with Java. When you log in, how do you log in? It has to check the database, right? To see if you are the valid user. So that's why they have these components. Lightwitch IOC containers. So IOC injection. IOC stand for let's look at IOC So Spring Container is at the core of the Spring Framework. The container will create the objects. So we were talking about objects, right? Wire them together, configure them, and manage their complete life cycle from creation to destruction. Spring Container uses DI to manage the component that make up an application. These objects are called Spring Beans. So the container gets its instruction on what objects to instantiate, configure, and assemble by reading the configuration metadata provided. The configuration metadata can be re represented either by XML, Java annotations. We talk about XML, right? Like we see the Java XML in Android, right? Or Java code. Annotation, we talk about that, like add overwrite, remember? Overwrite is a notation. Let me show you one more time, like that, a notation, right? Okay. So this is pretty much like a person class, right? Pojo, remember? Like last time you created a person class, right? So we have a Pojo plain old Java object classes. It could be person, it could be any classes that you're going to create. Like today you're going to create a car class, right? So the spring IOC container makes use of the Pojo. So this is called a spring container. And then like based on the metadata right say here the configuration is the metadata you can config this through the XML code like like remember we config we, we use XML in Android right to configure the view right so but that is pretty much the Android right but this is for the web right and then we just look at the classes so we use spring container and then we represent the application at the final result it pretty much just mixing together right to get a result so this is pretty much a package we, we learn package remember i showed you last time right 
we create a package edu nvcc csc 200 right to represent where the class is correct so this is pretty much just have a class called bean factory so this is just a f like spring already provide that just like you just import to use right it's just like the way that you import all the time right so this is simple container providing the basic support for di and it's defined by the bean factory interface Okay, so I just jump to that a little bit because we want to see what's IOC, right? Now go back. So it's pretty much just made that lightweight IOC for you containers. This is beneficial for developing and deploying applications on computers with limited memory and CPU resources. Okay, Spring also provides a consistent transaction management interface that can scale down to a local transaction. Now they've been talking about DI, DI, right? What's DI? DI stands for dependency injection. and IOC stand for inversion of control so the technology of Spring is most identified with is the dependency injection flavor of inversion of control the inversion of control is a general concept can be expressed in many different ways Depend dependency injection is merely one concrete example of inversion of control Right, let's see, when we're writing a complex Java application, application classes should be as independent as possible of other Java classes. Like what I did, remember, I separate into two different classes now. So I have bottle cap, right, class, and then I could create another driver, like with the main so we try to separate the classes like should be independent like you see system again is another class right when you write a big application you should separate class to respond on its own entity as much as you could right like this is an object thinking right thinking as object idea Right, as independent as possible of other Java classes to increase the possibility to really use these classes. Right, so when I create a bottle cap, I can use in many applications now. Right, when I create a math class, I can use them in many applications and to test them. So dependency injection helps in gluing these classes together. So that means the dependency injection. And at the same time, they still be independent. So let's look at these two words separately. The dependency part translates into an association between two classes. For example, class A is dependent on class B. Like if I create a bottle cap this could be class B and I going to create another class called what bottle this is going to be who bottle is depending on what bottle cap correct bottle is depending on bottle cap right you pretty much just going to need to use bottle cap in here correct you have to define bottle cap in here. So this is called dependent, right? Like class bottle is dependent on class bottle cap. Now let's look at the second part, injection. We talk about DI, right? Dependent, dependency. 
So we understand what dependency, right? Class A, class bottle cap. Class bottle depend on class bottle cap, right? So what's injection, right? Let's look at another word. All this means is class B will get injected into class A. Like, it's inject into class A. Bottle cap inject into bottle. Right, but by the IOC. Right, IOC inversion of control. If you look back to IOC again, we we gonna get into that again, right? IOC. Look at IOC again. So this is Java classes, All right? So we gonna have several classes. For example, we have bottle cap and bottle. The Spring Container will look at your configuration, how they are dependent, right? And then they will make it happen to run the application. Instead of, instead of combining this way, we're not going to combine that way. We let IOC doing the work. We don't want to have main in here, right? Huh? Bottle should not have main in here. Bottle should be just the bottle. We try to but make them. The bottle, cap, you, are, are bottle cap is just bottle cap, no main. We gonna have oh. another one, bottle driver, right? Okay. To have the main. Oh, if that was the main one, though. What, what like that we gonna test the bottle. We call bottle driver, right? Uh -huh. And this should have the main. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. So this concept is very important, okay, when you design application. Make sense? So then you, you can start to do like bottle, yeah. bottle equals to new bottle in here, right? But we were talking about bottle cap and bottle that they're dependent, okay? And we see how IOC works. Like now, we didn't use IOC, right? We didn't use Spring, correct? All right. Now we understand, right? What is uh, what's IOC and what's DI, right? DI stand for dependency injection. IOC stand for inversion of control, right? So dependency injection can happen in the way of passing parameters to the constructor. Okay. Like here, right? I create a constructor name bottle. This is called constructor. We already know that from last class we touched. Yes. The method that has the same name as your class name, right? This is pretty much as initialized. If you if you didn't provide parameters, right? But we were talking about we can do dependency injection. You can provide parameters, right? Remember how the other day you were talking about hiding some of the information? For yeah. that, would you put private? Yes. Oh. Yes. Good catch. You mean study. Alright, so Right, we could pass in right the parameter as the bottle cap too, as another object type, right? Correct. So this is called dependency injection, right? It's just terminology, right? But you understand the concept, yeah. right? Like a way of passing parameters to the constructor, like now. Let's say this dot bottle cap is equivalent to that bottle cap, correct? And daily you could now when you create a constructor with parameters, you require to provide a parameter now, just like system.in. Yeah. 
that you do, right? That dependency injection, right? So this one is you can create a new. You could just call instantiate inside like that too, like short version new. See that? Yeah. Bottle cap. Right, the bottle cap. I could just get the color for the bottle cap, right? Red and the size of the bottle cap. Okay. Remember that we created that last time, right? The bottle cap constructor right here, right? All right. So, or by post construction using setter methods. There you go. We talk about setters, right? That's one way to do dependency injection through the constructor or through the set set color like setter, right? You can pass to that. Just like the way that I show you. I can set the color white, right, of the bottle cap. So this is called dependency injection again, right? Dependency DI, right? Okay. Now you understand what setter methods were said, right? So all those setters. This is all pojo. Pojo plain old Java objects. Object bottle cap has setter and getters to access to the data, right? And set the data. So that's called pojo. So as dependency injection is the heart of Spring Framework, we explain this concept in a separate chapter. Okay, so the heart of Spring Framework is dependency dependency injection. We didn't use Spring yet, but we try to understand what what is Spring, right? All right, so we talk about the DI. Now we also have AOP, aspect oriented programming. What's that? Another thing, DI is the heart of Spring. Spring is also have AOP framework. The function that the functions that span spans multiple points of an application are called cross cutting concerns, and these cross cutting concerns are conceptually separate from the application business logic. These are various common good examples of aspect, including locking, declarative transactions, security, caching. So we talk about there's so many aspects like in the application in the term of business logic, right? Like when you do authentication, lock-in, security aspect, right? When you do provide your credit card transaction, shopping cart, that's the transactions right right and locking you just want to lock all the uh, activity of the users right so those are aspects remember we talk about module module right small modularity in object oriented programming OOP right we make it as a class class right as a modules right an object Whereas in AOP, the unit of modularity is the aspect instead of the class, right? We look at the aspect. So dependent in, dependency injection helps you decouple your application objects from each other. What's decouple? Make it loosey, right? Like, remember, OOP concept of modularity. Modularity is bottle drive. I mean, not the bottle itself and the bottle cap. They're two separate things, right? I make into two modules, right? Instead of make them in one class, I separate them, right? And then the dependency, just glue them. The I just glue them together. The bottle should have bottle cap when I create it. Make sense? Now when I create a new bottle, I just, this is how you do DI, right? Injection through the constructor, right? Okay. Like helps to decouple application object from each other. While the AOP helps you decouple cross-cutting concern from the objects that they affect. So the bottle driver is the, is the, um the main. 
that right. have all of them. The application. Yeah, the application. Like, this, this is not, a, like, this is the bottle cap, the object, right? Yeah. Bottle object, right? And bottle driver is the application. I run the application. Okay. So like, like, like Minecraft the app, app application. Mm -hmm. What his name? Minecraft. Steve, right? Minecraft. Steve, right? Steve is an object, right? The actor. Oh, the one oh, who, I, oh I don't know. I don't know. You guys, I'm pretty Minecraft. Minecraft oh, okay. But professor, okay. Um, would you be able to set the the um the that the center like in the original class and then just um put the main method onto I mean the main on onto um the application. Mm -hmm. would, would that would that work easier instead of um, like where where so you want to put so, it in? Um, you know how you put uh, how the bottle cap is red and size is one point two five. Would you? But this is the main application. Like this is the actual application. So you wouldn't be able the to bottle. just leave that in. Like, bottle. like water bottle. Yeah. Right. Water bottle could be the application. Because bottle itself could be for soda bottle. Oh no! Yeah, I, I get that. Like, what I'm trying let to let me say refactor. Like, yeah. Can you keep all that information in, in bottles class, but then just um transfer over the main main bottle over into bottle driver by just putting a bottle dot main ARGS, you know, because then that'll bring the whole thing over, wouldn't it? Say it one more time. So that's what I did for one of my posts for the homework. So. Instead of uh, putting the main method of bottle on here, would you be able to just keep it in its own class, right? In this class? In what this class can you say the name? I don't the see. Bottle, the bottle. So instead of having this written here, can you type it into but here? But bottle is not the application. Yeah, no, but... If you design main in here, you cannot reuse bottle anymore. You can't Correct? Know, you can't I cannot use bottle to fill the beer. Yeah, but you can be a bottle. water bottle and type in um, bottle.main because that, that, that worked for me when I was doing my homework, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do whatever you want, but that's not the, the side that we want. Okay. You can always make a main in here, dude. but the main should be in the main application. No, that's no, it. No, oh, yeah, no, I'm not saying making a, like a main in there, but like, like um, kind of like referencing it, you know? Like, but you don't, yeah, you could reference, but why you, why you want to reference bo water bottle in the bottle? Because it's going to be in the water bottle anyways. And it's just, it's just like, it's just like, I'm at the, what, but this, the bottle is the object. Yeah. But the main the application the is the, the like Deer Park. Deer Park want to fill the water into the bottle. Then Deer Park should call bottle here. So you but you try to make the park to get in the bottle. That doesn't make sense. You try to make the other way around. So, well, right? That makes sense? Wouldn't it be like you could take the bottle and the bottle cap and then combine it in, in, in the uh -huh. water bottle? That's it. That's what we want. You, yeah, but wouldn't you be able to do it this way by just typing? So, keeping this? This? When you said this, I cannot see. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. So, if you, if you just keep type this part, into the bottle and then keep why it. first why you want to type this part in the bottle when that, when this part is not for the bottle bottle should not have main but, the, but then can't you transfer it over by just typing in bottle dot main then it'll bring the whole class in and then it'll run the whole application with every class you type in there wouldn't it so okay like, you, you try to say i'm at a bottle factory yeah and i want water to fill in this bottle mm -hmm. I want beer to fill in this bottle. I want everything to fill in this bottle. Yeah. That what you try to say. That doesn't make sense. No, 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 no. The no. fact that you say you just buy my bottle and you fill by yourself in your main application. Yeah, but so, so no. It I'm doesn't make sense to make a main in here because I only my job is to build a bottle for you. I'm well, not. You I'm not. I don't care. You go make water in there. I don't care. You just take the bottle. You buy my bottle. But if you set, if you do the setter for the parameters for it, wouldn't you be able to take that whole thing and combine it with the bottle cap to equal to give you the final product? You yeah, know, I combined the bottle cap already. You 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 can put a man in here. I said yes, but that's not a good design. Oh, so you allow you, if you want main. to do that's no 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 problem no errors but, but it's error in the design really? the design is bad 
Uh, that that's why we try to talk about here. About it, I don't know, maybe we I'm try to decouple it, but you not decouple it. You decouple your application objects. But wouldn't that make it more organized? No. Okay, I don't think you're understanding what I'm like. I don't think I'm saying it right or something. Cause like the thing is like okay, so go back to the code, professor. I'm sorry. So if you put a main here, right, and then go back to just write a code then. Okay. So if you have like. The, you're out. You on. cannot write a main there. Yeah, no, That's a class. No, I'm, th I'm thinking how. I... Why don't okay, you... so let's. Okay, let, let me tell you. So if this was the main bottle, right? Main, that was the main class for bottle, okay? And you came here and typed in like. Um, like, uh. Bottle. Dot main. ARGS. You know, if you had that. And then whatever other, like, bottle cap dot main ARGS wouldn't it just combine it all so then you'll have a cleaner you know code on this one but we we only have one main in the application we can have multiple mains in one application you'll have one main would it, would it be the same same, same uh, concept for or no if it wasn't a main you can't flip no, we, like that because the main application run the app whole application okay, okay. All right, now we understand what's AOP, right? Now we pretty much understand the overview of Spring. So let's look at the architecture of Spring. Spring could be one stop shop because they pretty much has almost everything for you in your enterprise applications, enterprise level like the big organization. However, Spring is modular, allowing you to pick and choose which models are applicable to you without having to bring in the rest. The following section provides details okay, of the modules. So let's look at the modules. So Spring Framework provides about 20 modules. So we have the modules like for connecting to database, JDBC. This is mapping to the database. Like mapping mean like a class mapping directly to the table. Like I have a person, right? A person class can map to when you actually register your data has to correct as a table with a person name person age right so we can map that to a database GMS is Java messaging system like when you send a message like probably when you texting you can use this to help okay and all the transactions and then we have the web portion, web sockets. Like when you connect to get the data, you can use socket. Like for example, like I show you the web, right? How, how you could get the data to display. Like for example, Let's show you an example of my uh, the Sam Classic. So you see, this is a menu item, right? We click on the menu, right? Okay. This pretty much the data, right? How do you get the data to display? If you make a simple web, you pretty much just hard code it in there. To this page, but if you make a web like more, more into like dynamic, like talking to the database. When I make changes, I just change on the database instead of relying on web developer to change for me, right? It's gonna update right directly here. Right, one way you can use like messaging system, right, to exchange the data. I mean. 
no messaging uh like yeah that's notification i'm talking about socket right you can use like web socket to get it there directly through the socket web portion web just do the web right and then the sublet the sublet is sublet is the java code again like your logic to when i do request i request for the page we call http request as a class okay and then we get http response back right like that sublet and then portlet Yeah, I understand, but we didn't talk about the, the classes. Example? That's just basic. But it's the same concept, kind of, though, right? Like, that's what I'm trying to grasp on. Yeah, but that's not the way to do. Okay. Okay, so Portlet is a web based component that will process requests and generate dynamic contents. The end user would essentially see Portlet as being a specialized container with a web page, right? That occupies a small window in the portal page. Depending on the client nature of the website providing the product, you could use this area to receive different types of information, such as travel information, business news, or even local weather, right? So it's just like part of the right web that you see changes. Okay. The portlet provides users with the capability to customize the content appearance and position of the portlet okay so that's portlet let's see what's oxm right So it's pretty much just an XML. So they call OXM just objects XML mapping. Okay, like for example. <coughs> okay. So let's look at this one as an example. So last time we've been talking about XML, right? So yeah, that's a good example in Android, right? You pretty much just use XML to do view and it's mapped to the object, right? In the program, right? That's pretty much one example. Let's see. So it's loading all right yeah like you see this is an XML file here we've been talking about the design right under source main and we have all the XML file like this is pretty much your XML dot XML, right? And this is pretty much just the text on XML, right? And it's pretty much just map to become an object like button, right? Become an object button class, if you remember, right? So we have an object called button class, right? Button right there, right? All right, so that's called OXM, right? 
we talk about AOP aspect, right? AOP aspect, right? Aspect what? Oriented programming, right? Messaging system, instrumentation, instrumentation, core container like beans, core context, SPL test. We have the test. So beans, let's talk about beans. So beans is pretty much just like the set of getters that you learn, right? All right, so let's look at this. <coughs> Java is just a standard. All the properties private. Use getter setters. And no argument constructor. Those are beans. Okay. All right. What's uh we talk about core Java code context and SPL. So they have modules, right? So what's SPL? Spring expression language. It's pretty much just a spring language itself. Okay. It's a powerful expression language that support querying and manipulating an object graph at runtime. The language syntax is similar to unified EL, but offer additional features, most notably method invocation and basic string templating functionality. Okay. All right, so now we look at the modules, right? So this is just going to start to explain like core containers consists of core, beans, context, and expression language. We just look at expression language like SPL. So the core provides the fundamental parts of the framework, including the IOC and DI features. The beans provide being factory which is a sophisticated implementation of the factory pattern now when they talk about factory pattern and it's just about the design okay like when you design an application they have the that's why we start to look at UML diagram right Remember last time I show you our diagram, right? The factory method pattern is a creation no pattern that uses factory method to deal with problem of creating objects without having to specify the exact class. You could create an object without specify exact class. The object that will be created, right? This is done by creating objects by calling a factory method. Either specified in an interface and implemented by child classes or implemented in a base class and optionally overridden by derived classes rather than by calling a constructor. So in one word, you use factory instead of call the constructor to create object. Okay? Like this is just showing you the class. So let's look at this is UML diagram, right? So we want to make a mess game, right? We want to write an application, Java, to do a mess game. So mess game has a method make room and operation. Right? So when you create pretty much just room. Room, room is a base class, right? For the final product. So magic room pretty much just 
use the room, right? I, like ex this is called inheritance concept in Java, meaning that you can learn this in detail in 201. Okay, but just giving you an overview first. So you can make a room like this is gonna be a regular room. You can make a classroom. You can make a magic room, but make sure room has like a door, something like that. And then the magic mesh game pretty much uses the magic room. You see, when when you design an application, you create so many classes, right? And magic mesh game pretty much is the same. It's just come from mesh game, just like this concept. So whenever we call make room, it's gonna return new magic room. So room is the best class. Right? Magic room or ordinary room is the final product, right? Mesh game declared the abstract factory method to produce such a best product like make a room. Right? It's a method. Magic room or ordinary room are subclasses. Magic room, ordinary room, are the best product implementing the final product. So, magic mess game and ordinary mess game are subclasses of mess game. This is called subclass, right? Under that. So implementing the factory method producing the final products. Factory method decouple call chorus mesh game. Right? Normally we have to call mesh game as a constructor, but we don't have to do that, right? This make the new operator redundant, right? If you have to do that, allow adherence to the open close principle and make the final product more flexible in the event of change. So let's look at implementation. Like, we create a class called Miss Game, right? <laughs> and then we have the rooms, right? Which is pretty much the list of the room, okay? This is just an attribute, okay? So don't worry about the too many syntax here. You learn that more in 201, but I just want you to give you an overview. So that's what you can see in 201. Right. So that's why I said this concept you should stay focused. The class concept is so important. If you lost, you get lost all the way in your Java coding lifetime. Okay. So it's very important. And if you understand, you got it. So you can pick any languages that do object oriented programming. It doesn't have to be Java. You understand for the rest of your programming lifetime. Okay, and that's why I focus on this until the end of 201. Do we use the same type Those are called Yeah. If you're still taking class with me, right? So this is pretty much a constructor, right? That pretty much just you see, it's just used to create the rooms, right? From the room class, right? But is it say new room? Now we have to say room room one equals new new room, right? But it actually create from make room instead, right? In the above, where the mess game construct is a template method, that makes some common logic. It refers to a make room factory method. See that? Make room, this is just the concept of the factory, right? You don't have to create it from, from the what? Constructor, right? You can just call the make room factory method that encapsulates the creation of rooms such that other rooms can be used in a subclass.
Okay. Yeah, and this is pretty much how you make a make room. So make room, you just say, yeah, you create a new in there, new magic room, new ordinary room, ordinary room. All right. So we're gonna talk about that more. This is pretty much just show you the factory thing, right? What's that? So beans pretty much just the same like we talk about bean factory, right? Which is a sophisticated implementation of the factory pattern. So that's pretty much a factory pattern. Like factory pattern at this point you understand that you could create object without calling constructor. Right. Context module builds on the solid base provided by the core and beans modules is a medium to access any object defined and configured. The application context interface is the focal point of the context modules, right? And the expression language, right? Spring expression language modules provides a powerful expression language for querying and manipulating an object graph at runtime. <coughs> All right, so this is just talk about the data access integration modules, right? So have the JDBC provide the connection abstraction layer that remove the need of tedious JDBC related coding. You can connect directly to the database from your code. <coughs> ORM module provide integration layer for object relation mapping APIs, including JPA, JDO, Hibernate, and IBITIS. And then OXA modules provides an abstraction layer that support object XML mapping implementation for JXP, Castor, XML Bean, JBX, and Extreme. So this is just like a concept of mapping XML to objects, right? The Java messaging service JMS modules contains feature to produce and consuming messages. And the transaction modules support programmatic and declarative transaction management for classes that implement special interfaces and for all your projects. Now we have the web modules, right? A web layer consists of the web, web MVC, we talked about MVC already, web socket, and web portal. Like web combined with many types, right? The web modules provide basic web or oriented integration features such as multi-part file upload functionality and the initialization of the IOC container, right? Like you can upload, right? Using servlet listener and a web-oriented application context. So is Spring like a library, like jQuery for JavaScript? Yeah, pretty much. So it's a framework like, it's, it's, it's more than just jQuery, just like very similar, but more than that. But it's for Java. Yeah, for Java. All right. So Web MVC, we talk about that. We talk about WebSocket provides support for WebSocket based two-way communication between the client and server in web applications. Web Pilot modules provide the MVC implementation to be used in a pilot environment and mirrors to the functionality of Web Sublet. Miscellaneous, right? Like AOP modules provide aspect oriented programming implementation, allowing you to define method interceptors, point cuts to cleanly, clean decouple code that implements functionality that should be separated like locking functions separate that from different other functions right aspects modules provide integration with aspect j which is again a powerful and measure apop framework instrumentation modules provide class instrumentation support and class loader implementation to be used in certain application servers and messaging modules provide support for stomp as a WebSocket sub 
protocol to use in application. It's also support in annotation programming model for routing processing stop message from WebSocket client and test model support testing of Spring using JUnit or test NG framework. We learned those. So in 201, I start to introduce you to test with JUnit. Okay. But now I just want you to look at an overview of the whole picture of Java that you need to understand classes, objects. You use them a lot. This is just architecture, right? So environment setup, just like how you start using it. Okay. So you all like first day that we learn Java, you have to set JDK, set IDEs, right? Same, you need to set JDK. If you want to do web, you need to set Tomcat, right, to be a server. And depend on IDE if you use Eclipse or IntelliJ, right? Make sense? So that's pretty much it, right? We already have JDK set up. We already know how to do this, correct? So now if you want to use locking system, locking is pretty much just like not instead of the system dot out, you can do lock. Right? Lock uh lock dot out. Like yeah, it's going to write to the file instead. Okay instead of showing the console. So it's just recommend us to install the locking. Right, just download and extract into. So I want you to go back and pretty much just try to prepare your system here, okay? Now come back. And then just set up your IDEs. We already have IntelliJ. I mean, if you want to use Eclipse, you could use Eclipse too. If you want to explore your Eclipse. And then download the Spring Framework libraries. Just like, just additional libraries, right? That we want to use. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to try to show you how to set that. Because after we set that, then we can actually run our first Hello World, right? Now, before we going to do that, let's make sure. I want you to set that environments because when you do that with a web application, that's another extra credit that I was to try to tell you, right? I introduced that for you to get more score, right? So last time you can do with Android. Now you can do both Android and web application using Spring. You could use Eclipse or IntelliJ, but we can start with Eclipse first with that instruction, right? Then it's easy to follow. And then we can modify using IntelliJ later. And we actually can use IntelliJ to do that. Like how to do that? You can just go to File, New, Project. And you see there's Spring. And 4, right? See that? You can use Spring. Like now we have to download the library. So, hello. Spring. <laughs> Hello world. Spring. All right. So this is structure for it, right? So we have the Spring libraries, right? Like, that's why IntelliJ just make it so simple. You don't have to worry about downloading. It's already there. JDK is set up. Yeah. But I don't think they... I'm not sure they have locking. Because they may need a lock. Here, right? Commons locking. All right. So, let's create a new Java class. So, let's see if we can do this one with this example, right? Hello, world.
All right. So, assume that we use IntelliJ. Let's see. We set environment setup. IntelliJ just do that for you, right? Before you start with writing your first example using Spring Framework, you have to make sure that you have set up your Spring environment properly, right? So you can go back and set that up. Now let's you proceed to write simple Spring application to print Hello World. So we this is just based on Eclipse, okay? Eclipse, like if you use Eclipse, it's gonna show you create new project, All right? Hello Spring, just like say Hello Spring, right? This is pretty much the same. And then after that, you look at its Explorer, pretty much we get the library, right? The same, right? And then in Eclipse, you have to manually add the required libraries. You see that this is like the simple library that doesn't have the Spring yet, right? Sort and JDK, right? And now, if you use, like I said, if you use Eclipse, it's going to be a little bit more work than IntelliJ. So you have to do this at, as a second step, let us add Spring Framework and common locking API libraries in our project, right? Let's just show you how to do that. So now you pretty much has our library, which this is a library that we already have. If you notice that one more time, right? See that common locking, right? We just have a more latest version. And these are the models we just talked about. AOP, aspect, beans, context, core, expression, student, JDB, all the models, right? All those 20 models that we mentioned earlier, right? Make sense? ORM. So we got our libraries. Right, so it's show the library that we add, okay? Now, Create a source file, right? Hello Spring project, we need to create a package call. So you could create a package and then create a class hello world.java. Okay. So let's do that. So this is first hello world.java with what? We're going to create a package and hello world of Java. And you see, we look at it as like, like class, setter and getters now. See that? Set message, pass into set. Just like what we learned before about in the version of setter and getters. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new Java class. What are we going to name it? Hello world, right? Okay, so now we're going to name this package to our edu.nvcc.csc200. Okay. Now I got the hello world in the term of class, right? You guys see that? Now we're going to do another one. Now this is just main application with a main, right? Main like the driver, right? So like this is just like a main app where you guys do main method okay so let's look at this code a little bit so we have to import the package that we need to use like we have a new class called application context right and we have a new class called class path XML application context so it might just link to where the beans XML is, right? The context. And then you pretty much just call the context to get bean and pass the word. It's return an object. Like this is an object way to look at, right? And then you can just do get message to access to my Like let me show you. Now, hello world, you guys understand this for sure. Just put a message, right? Attribute, right? Think term of object way, right? Set the message and get the message, right? So now we're gonna create a new Java class. We just call what main application, which is the main method right there, right? So I'm gonna call main app, right? A class name like driver, right? So main app, you gonna have a public statics, right? 
void main correct string arg s right now we want to use hello world how do you use hello world just instantiate it right normally what you're gonna do you're gonna do like this hello well object right equals to new hello world because you already create a class right if I split it then you can see so I have two classes called this just like the way you scan it right you call object or the person that we learned last time right and if you want to do hello world dot what get message and then what do we do get message should print out your message right it says in return right so we run an application now pretty much you are using spring right this is not the way that spring it's just a way that we have learned right so in spring you probably want to do the application context right so you want to say application context right and call it context equals to new now you're going to talk, talk about the path to the beans file right beans.xml class path xml application context class path right with the beans beans.xml okay like that and now since we use that we can use an it's going to return the object right so the we got we got to call context right we create an object called context just like you do system dot in right like scanner dot system dot in but this is just like context application context so we have to call dot so the object that we want to call we call get beans because we try to like set the context to beans so we want to get beans right get beans bean right without s and now we can pass the word that you want to say out right like hello world this guy is going to return an object an object is pretty much the hello world object right there if you casting it because it's going to return just the object so we we have to cast it then to the type like hello world object right which we can say hello world which I can technically move this guy down here right and replace the way that we did earlier right there right this is just the spring way to do right with a spring and then you can pretty much just do object get message which is that get message right the same thing okay now this one will you have to create a beans configuration but let's see what does this guys do first so the first step is to create an application context where we use framework API right the class pass XML application context this API loads beans configuration file and eventually based on the provided API it takes care of creating and initializing all the objects so beans mentioned it in the configuration file which we have to deal with the configuration file right the XML so the second step is used to get the required bean using get bean method of the created context right we do get bean right here right so this method use beans id to return a generic object which finally can be cast as to actual object that's why we cast to hello world Alright, so now once you have object, you can call the method in the object. 
So now we have to create a beans.xml right configuration file now, which is an XML file. Okay. So this is going to act as a, like glue, right? Right, cement that glues the beans, glue the classes together. So we're going to create a file under the sort directly. So source, create a new XML file, right? If we don't have, do we have one here? Beans dot XML. So it pretty much just going to create the yeah, the is this is just a like HTML tag, like version of XML, encoding type like UTF beans tag, right? XML pretty much just a tag code like you open. This is called tag. Open and close brackets. So this is beans tag. And just reference to the where the schema for the beans is. Okay. So what we want to worry about is just inside, like remember we created a class named hello world, right? So this is pretty much just going to return to the beans ID. Actually, this has to be the ID hello world get beans. It has to spell exactly the same, right? To the beans of XML, we refer to this guy. Get beans just pass the ID, right? So now we refer to the beans. And the class package, right? Package is what edu dot nvcc, right? Dot csc two hundred, where you have your hello world, right? See, and the property name, that's it. Message, and the value you're gonna say hello world. Make sense? So that's how you configure the beans. That's beans, okay? So it's just create the relationship okay a little bit all right so now when spring application get loaded into the memory framework makes use of the above configuration file to create all the beans divided and assign them as a unique ID as defined beans tag right there hello world you can use property tag to pass the value of the different variables used at the same time of object creation. All right, so lastly, we're going to run the program. So we're going to do this by keep main Java file, either run option available in the Eclipse ID or control F11. So this is for Eclipse. So run see how you run so this is not Eclipse right so this is IntelliJ all right so run uh, spring yeah. run spring project all right let's look at this one with intelligent J idea, right? Alright, so 
we're going to have to configure this to run on IntelliJ because we're using IntelliJ. Now, I know it's about to end. I will show that. Okay, but I want you to look at the 5.3. Okay. So 5.3, what you need to do is you have to create the same car class, right? Just like person or the bottle cap, right? But this is car with this attributes, right? Color, horsepower, engine size, right? Now make two, and then you create set and getters. We have two string, constructor, no parameters, and with parameters. Okay, and then you go create a driver, or in this case, we can do the main application, right? That you call the constructor and create this two, three different objects car, my car, his car, and her car. And after that, you want to do pretty much using two string to print out information of our objects. You use setters to change the, all the attributes, color, horsepower, size, and make for each car object. And then you just do getters. Pretty much I want you to test our setter getters. Okay? And that's pretty much it. But you will get extra credit by using beans spring that I just showed you. Like, it's all simple set and get as I just showed you earlier, right? You just need to set it in this format. That's pretty much it. So you do this one, you get like 10% more. Android, another 10%. So you can get 120%. Alright? Now, we call the row. Yes. Oh, this code, right? Professor, do you teach two or two as well? If I, if during the break, if I like read the, the rest of the textbook, can I test out of your two or two or one class? Test out. Yeah, during the break, you know how we have a break between the semesters? If I just like knock the rest of the... Alright, so I'll, let's talk about that later. We call it row.